All right, guys, we could very well be bearing witness to the death of the proverbial Hatsan descending shot chart. And I would very much like for you guys to remember that today as we go through this vlog because at its core, that's what this gun represents. We are gonna jump down all sorts of little bunny trails that's going to explore some of the Frankenstein DNA that Hatsan has come up with here. And I would very much like your guys' feedback in the comments down below as to where you feel this gun's true value is and where you feel it will fit into your world as an air gunner or an air gun hunter. So please remember that, okay? Keep that in mind. All right, so what we're looking at here is the new Hatsan Air Max. To give you kind of a blanketing overview, you're in the $680 price point here. The gun is 37 inches long. It's obviously a bullpup of sorts. The action is, where the heck is the action? The action's back here. The cocking lever is right up here near the trigger. So you're getting that like, you know, that bullpup feel in action, but there's some really kooky things going on here. And I guess before I tell you what they are, let me tell you what this gun has done for me in the last couple of days of learning it, all right? So, in an essence, this gun is getting 85 usable shots. And by usable, I mean 50 and 100 yard usable. So 85 usable shots at a 43 foot pound average. It's basically taking a 25 grain pellet and it's running it from 860 to 890 back to 860 with about an 876 foot per second average across those 85 shots with a 34 foot per second extreme spread. So at its heart, at its core, that's what this is. In my opinion, that is a huge victory for us air gunners and something that Hot Sun doesn't typically like to do because this is a company that's kind of known throughout the world as being the super powered, when I say super powered, like they really overpower their air guns, you know, to kind of cater to the, the air gun hunter that's out there with the caveat being that you kind of get that descending uh, shot chart. But, um, but that's not what really this is all about, all right? So what this is all about is, obviously it's got this big old 400 cc bottle up here. It's a 200 bar fill, but what maybe has not jumped out to you is that right in here, lives a 90 cc bottle or 90 cc integrated reservoir. So it's kind of like a Hatsan Bull Boss mated with like uh, uh, the old Nova and kind of came up with this. So you got 490 cc's of air at a 200 bar fill. So you got a tremendous amount of volume in here. And let me just break for a second because I know you're gonna ask, Yes, the Hatsan regulator that you can buy from Hatsan USA, I think Pyramid 2 for around 100 bucks, will indeed fit in this gun. I have confirmed it with, with Hatsan USA. So you can go down that road, but I don't really feel this needs it. It's kind of perfect. Well, perfect is a very subjective word, and we're going to get into that in a minute. But as far as the tune goes, I don't think I would mess with this because you're basically in that 43 foot pound to 46 foot pound window, usable 85 shots over, depending on what pellet you go with. And what I mean by that is it was pushing the Mark IIs, the 34 grain Mark IIs to, um, what the heck was it pushing it to? 800 and uh, brain fart, 785 feet per second and it's pushing that 28 grain Barracuda Hunter and Barracuda Hunter Extreme to that 830 to 837 window kind of in there. So it's basically a 42 to 46 foot pound gun, but really if I own this, I'm shooting either the 25 grain or the 34 grain, and I'm enjoying that 43 to 46 foot pounds because it performed very well for me at 25 yards. And by the way, if you're new to this channel, this is not my primary YouTube channel. This is like a little sister channel. It just gives me an opportunity for some more one-on-one -on -one time with you guys. My main channel where you will see a full review of this gun 
review it at 50 and 100 yards and a lot more data can be caught over on AEAC Home, which is also known as the Aragon Exploration and Advancement Channel. Okay, so back to this. All right, so it's a bullpup, right? It looks the part, it plays the part, but there's some goofy bullpup things going on here, right? So here's the positive, all right? It feels, whoops, it feels like a bullpup. I mean, the cocking lever is where it should be. It's nice and light. It's easy to operate, as you can see, all right? Everything is all good there. But the thing that's kind of, there's a couple of things that are kind of confusing. So a bullpup in my mind is something, there's a gun that's it's kind of like light, maneuverable, and you can point it up in the trees and you can kind of get around in the woods with it. But light, this gun isn't, all right? At totally by itself, you're at about 10 and a half pounds here. You put on a scope and mounts, forget the bipod, but just with the scope and mounts, I'm right about 12 pounds pounds here which is about double the weight of Hatsan's other bullpup the flash pup and so in my mind that makes this gun more of a prairie mountain gun especially since they've included from the factory a little picatinny rail so that you can put a bipod of your choosing on it it's not exactly light and nimble i mean it don't get me wrong it feels good the stock is slender everything feels like where it should be but you know this this is like this is not the short throw shifter you're going to get in a sports car this is like the long throw shifter you're going to get like in a pickup truck you know with a manual transmission so but it's really nice that it's placed up here you know and not back in here but with all the weight that's in this gun, like, you know, it's like, you know, if I'm up at an angle, I'm probably okay, like in here. But this, you know, I don't think I would want to hold this out like this, trying to hold it on steady on something like a squirrel or a rabbit at 50 yards. It's just a little bit too much gun here. But the added weight makes it a great prairie, mountain, long range, on the bipod type deal. And with the 43 foot pounds by 85 times usable, you can really reach out and touch some critters. So I, you know, that was just kind of all a little bit confusing to me. I'm not sure what Hot Sun is exactly trying to achieve. If I had to guess, they're really just trying to give you guys that platform where the cocking arm is moved up here so it's more comfortable. And, you know, that's kind of the, the pro and the con there, right? So. The other thing that was a little bit goofy to me is this right here. Let me turn the gun around. So, so it has this adjustable cheek piece. The way you adjust it is you depress this button here and you can slide it up and down, right? So with it in the all the way down position and with this scope on extra tall rings, I'm still like... Like to get comfy, I'm having to like bury my cheekbone into this thing. And the scope is already like three and a half inches above the barrel line. And so I kind of, whoa, I kind of found myself in this place of like, well, do I want it to um, like, here, do I want it to look good? Like looking clean or do... Do I want it, and this is kind of a convoluted deal here. This guy's just this little springs fall out and boing, there goes one and this deal, All right? Now, when I do this, okay, now it's easy to get my cheek in here. And I think that that's because of the sheer width of, of this guy. So what do we say, right? Baby's got back and it's because of like all of this girth Right here, I can't get my cheek close enough to this so that I'm like, you know, trying to get in there and it's just, I, I, I don't get it. It looks a little bit, when you look at it like this, it becomes kind of obvious, like, see? You got all this like afterthought in here and bulk like up in your face and, and it's beautiful, this works fantastic. It's not uncomfortable, it's just fine. My face comes in there and now I'm all lined up. I feel like with this thing, I need to go like an even taller mountain you know, we're kind of pushing the limits of a $210 scope as it is, by the way. This is the new Hawk Vantage, uh, what the heck is it? It's the, 
It's the 3 to 12 by 44. But what's so cool about it is it is their new side focus scope. And it's a mill that scope. And again, you're in the $200 price point. I'm really kind of impressed with this deal. But I do feel like I'm kind of pushing the limits of it with it being three and a half inches above the barrel, you know, getting comfy with this thing. So if I own this gun, this is coming off. Um, I know Hot Sun doesn't listen to me, but if they're gonna listen to me, guys, just put a little piece of Durl in here for us. Lop off all of this stuff here, save some weight, save some money, and, and at least call this air gunner a happy boy. I don't know about you guys, but I'd love to hear from you in the comments uh, down below on that, all right? So let's talk for a second about the trigger so it's a bullpup right which means that there's like a you know the triggers up here the actions back here normally the trigger is right underneath the action kind of throwing all the levers in there but since they put it up here there's like this little like i don't know little merry-go-round wheel thingy right in here that kind of like you know com connects it to the trigger the trigger mechanism and the owner's manual is really good because it does give you instructions on how to adjust that trigger but this trigger, guys, out of the box, depending on, if I pulled it like straight back, it's a six pound trigger out of the box. If I pulled it kind of up, let me do it. If I pull it straight back, you're about six pounds. If I kind of pull it up and back and like squeezing it up in here, that was kind of around four pounds out of the box and it wasn't great. Don't panic. I got it down to a very good two stage quattro. It is a quattro trigger. All right, it's a quattro trigger in every, every sense. You've just got some added, you know, mechanisms in here that are kind of just interfering with how awesome those quattro triggers normally feel, all right? I got it down to two pounds. I got it a nice first stage and a nice second stage. This tells you instructions one, two, and three. Ignore that. That should be like backwards. That should be like, like three should be one and, and two should be three and just, do it like this, right? Start with the number three trigger adjustment screw. That kind of adjusts like the overall weight. And I wound up backing that off maybe a turn and a half, so a turn and a half counterclockwise. And immediately I came from like that four, six pounds down to like two, two and a half pounds, somewhere right in there. And that's all I had to do. Um, I wouldn't recommend messing with like one. Uh, unless you really know what you're doing and you're an expert on these quattro triggers. But two, screw number two, according to this, um, kind of adjusts the first stage travel before you get up against that second stage stop and break. And um, oh, I probably turned that in one full turn and it brought the travel of this trigger from like thump to like thump. So, just by making those two adjustments, I got this within 95% of what a really good quattro trigger should feel like. I just, you, when you when you go through the cycle, here, I'll just show it to you. I mean, it's a, it's a very decent trigger. Here, look. Okay, so it behaves like it should, but when you go through the cycle, that first stage pull, you know, you can feel the added resistance of that like little, you know, turn thingy in here and, and so I'd like to lighten that up, but really I'm being very picky and splitting hairs just because I, I have put my hands on a lot of these hot sons and the triggers are very, very nice. This one I would say is if those are excellent, this is a very good. So just be aware of that. And that's kind of enough uh, harping on the trigger. So the magazine, the magazine's the magazine that we know from the AT44 and the BT65. Super reliable, pellets fly very accurately from it. The only thing you want to be aware of is that it will not fit the H&N Hornet, the Predator Polymag, and it didn't really even play well with the Barracuda. It's like there, it's like a, like you can fit the Barracuda in there, but it's like a millimeter off as far as how that Barracuda sits on these little like rubber O-rings in here. And it just, either the head wants to poke out too far or the skirt wants to poke out too far and it doesn't want to feed good. But you know what? Not really a big deal because it'll perform really well with other pellets as I touched on earlier. I had really good groups at 25 with the 25.39 grain, J, 25 grain JSB. Did really well with a 34 grain Mark II. It did really well 
with the 27, 28 grain Barracuda Hunter and the Barracuda Hunter Extreme. You know, those are the, if I'm buying this gun, these are the four pellets that I'm gonna buy along with, um, <clears throat> with this gun, all right? So something else you should probably be aware of is the rail up here at the top is both 11 millimeter and I don't know if it's Picatinny or Weaver, but I, I'm the guy who can never get either one of the scope mounts I use that are from Sportsmatch to play nice with that. So I always just go with the 11 millimeter. That's what I've got on here now. Like I said, these are extra tall rings. With this one inch side vantage scope, it seems to work just fine as long as I keep this thing off of here and, and I don't have to cock my neck and yeah, alignment is, uh, is really good there. Um, this fills with the same Hatsan fill probe that's been around forever. This one and its O-rings are like five years old now and it's amazing. It still works fantastic and it just fits right in there and it auto fills both the 400cc bottle and the 90cc integrated uh, integrated reservoir. All right, the stock. So I couldn't figure out, you know, the first thing, you know, the 10 pounds or 10 and a half and then the 12 pounds, I'm thinking, ooh, this would be good in synthetic, but it comes only in this wood. It's a nice stock, guys. I, you, I couldn't find anywhere, you know, what it was, um, what it was, um, what kind of wood it was. But I actually called Hots on USA. They emailed back to Turkey, and it's beach. So it's a nice beach wood stock. It looks real pretty. Like I said, it feels good. It's nice and narrow. It's not all fat in the wrong places that make it uncomfortable. It does come with a couple of sling studs. There's one here. There's one up there. Hotsan does include a sling in the package. I think they include two magazines and a fill probe and a uh, little O-ring rebuild kit and that's basically what uh, what uh, what you get with the gun. Okay, I think the last thing I want to touch on before I like overshare and leave nothing for the full review except the 50 and 100, you know, here in a week or so, is um, barrel cleaning is very easy. I use the patchworm. Um, the inside of this barrel, like a lot of these Turkish made barrels, um, was very smooth and very consistent when I pulled the patch through. So I expect the accuracy to be there just in this end, out this end, little straw so that you've got a guide through the, the quiet energy. And as long as we're talking about quiet energy, it ain't so quiet anymore. Okay. Like this was really cool when this first came out and hot sign, you know, and you had it in the 177, the 22. I feel like it was adequate, but when, when Hatsan start is really turning up the wick on these 25 cal guns into like the 45 foot pound, and guy, if you're new to air gunning, to put that in perspective, the 177 caliber that you buy at Walmart that shoots at a thousand feet per second, that's like 17 foot pounds of energy. So this is more than double the power, okay? You're carrying like 35 foot-pounds of energy or so, 25 yards out. So this is not a toy. This is a very powerful gun. And there's just not enough shroud and moderator here to really tame that report when you get into those power levels. And I found myself using the little um, foam earplugs because it was uncomfortable for me. It was actually causing um, discomfort in my eardrum. And when it gets to that point, I think it's time to, uh, you know, maybe take a second look at this. I'm grateful it's there. I mean, you shoot it without it, it's going to sound like a, you know, a 410 shotgun. So, I mean, it's doing a lot, but it's still, it's it's pretty boisterous anymore. Now, I think there's some aftermarket solutions. Donia Fell might sell an adapter here and you can add some stuff. But, you know, it's 37 inches long. I kind of like that it's 37 inches long. So, maybe make this a little fatter, make that a little fatter, do some some sexy stuff in here and... And just, you know, let's, you know, we'll get the sound meter on it out in the open, not, you know, in my pasture in Plant City, not with like the structure around it and really get a good beat on what it sounds like with the dual mic 3D stereo image and all that stuff. But, um, but yeah, you know, it's my job to tell, you, tell it like it is and, and, and that's how it is. So I've said a lot. We've jumped down all sorts of little trails with this, but the takeaway at the end of the day is, and I, again, please, I'm counting on you guys, step up for me in the comments down below, where else can I buy in the market today for $680 an air gun that is powerful, accurate, fairly quiet, 
has a very good trigger on it and delivers at a 200 bar fill 85 usable shots with a 34 foot per second extreme spread and a 43 foot pound average of those 85 shots. I'm drawing a blank and I feel like I'm the guy that's supposed to know. So <laughs> I'm counting on you guys to step up and, and maybe contribute there. But I, I think I'm just going to pause it right there. And you know, we've got the 4th of July uh, weekend coming up. I do have family from out of town up in Michigan. Um, you know, we have a big party here on the 4th and so, you know, I, I may not be my normal, like inside of a week, get you the full review on AEAC Home, maybe give me 10 days, two weeks, and it will, um, it will certainly be up there, weather permitting. Uh, so, oh, forgot to mention, we are having another SIMWA announcement, a little housekeeping. We're having another SIMWA announcement on the 4th of July. So SIMWA, our Servicemen Women Appreciation Event, which is where Michael and I, Michael's the owner of the Airgun Nation Forum, we take our own dollars and we purchase an air gun and we donate that to the servicemen and women of our country. So we just did one for Memorial Day. That one just ended, ended and Lieutenant Bob Humphrey of uh, something, Ber uh, uh, no, Berkeley Fire Department in something Beach, California, he won our uh, RFX uh, Dream Tactical, so congratulations to you. We plan on doing this four times a year forever. It's just our way of giving back to uh, you guys and saying thank you for the sacrifices that you've made. And I just wanted to uh, let you all know that that's coming over on AEAC Home on July 4th. We are doing it again. So hopefully wherever you are, whatever you're doing, this has wet your palate a little bit and brightened your day. And I hope to see you again real soon.